If you're in the market for an Xbox controller, this is the video you need. If you're looking to pick up a new or used gamepad for Xbox One or Series, Microsoft did keep them cross-generational compatible for all accessories, which is great. PlayStation, not so much. This video is going to be timestamped into chapters, which is going to be reflected in the description as well as on the timeline of the video, as it is going to be rather lengthy. However, I do recommend you watch the entire thing, not only because it gets my view minutes up and stimulates me in the gamer nether regions, but because it's packed chock full of controller information. I'm going to briefly massage the outside of some of the topics that are computer specific, such as overclocking. But this video's primary focus is buying a controller for the Xbox consoles. So things like the physical components of the controller, D-pad, face buttons, rear buttons. And of course, I'm going to go over things like quality control reputation and warranty because that is incredibly important. And by the end of the video, I'm going to have three distinct tiers, price points, or brackets of controllers for Xbox that I do strongly recommend. And you are going to be thrown for a friggin' loop by the victor. This is your controller, Captain. We've reached 6,900 feet. Go ahead and start flicking the sticks and molly in the back paddles. Mmm, you don't like back paddles? How about those rear buttons? We've tested almost 100 custom and premium controllers, and we're only at the beginning. You need a thumbstick guide or a tutorial on how to overclock your controller? Check out the controller playlist. Bing bong. Controller Captain out. A quick disclaimer for my audience, the stallions and stallionettes, as well as the newcomers sitting in the back row, or maybe the nosebleeds up there. A lot of these controllers were sent for review, but I treat all my children the same regardless. Whether I purchased them with my own hard-earned shekels out of my bank book or they were thrown my way for review, these are going to be my honest, unbiased thoughts on all of these controllers. And another quick note, all the prices in the comparison are going to be based on the regular prices in the builder without any promotions or discount or coupon codes. However, if and when you do go to pull the trigger and purchasing one of these game pads, I do strongly recommend checking the description below because there are going to be some exclusive discount codes down there, especially for the very expensive higher-end premium controllers when we get into that upper echelon. But even the common man's controllers for us peasants, us cretins out there, the wired $45 game pads that you're going to find on Amazon and whatnot, they're all linked in the description below. All the controllers I'm talking about here today, well, not all of them, all the ones I do recommend are going to be linked in the description below. I'm covering 28 controllers here today. I've reviewed each and every one of these individually. Check the controller playlist because I guarantee you I have reviewed a controller that you want a little bit more information on. Now, if you've shopped for third-party aftermarket pro or premium controllers for Xbox, you probably noticed there is a surplus of them, a lot more than Switch and PlayStation. The reason for that is since Xbox pretty much opens up its compatibility, at least wired, it allows all of these janky third-party controllers to flood in. This isn't allowed on PlayStation because they use a Bluetooth 5.1 protocol that is pretty strict and doesn't allow all third-party controllers to be connected and pretty much no wired third-party controllers. As we're on the Xbox side of the house, you have a lot of these wired third-party pro controllers, but not so many wireless pro controllers. That's because Microsoft uses what's called Xbox Wireless, which is a dedicated are a frequency. It's not a 2.4 or 5 gigahertz band. It is their own dedicated frequency that shouldn't get interference with other electronic devices in your room. Separate shorter video on the topic coming in the near future, although I pretty much just summarized the damn thing there. But you will find some wireless Xbox Pro controllers. We're going to be covering them in this video. They are rather expensive because they start life as a stock Xbox controller and then get disassembled and customized by hand by individuals in these custom controller companies such as Battle Beaver, Hex, and AIM, just to name a few. Corsair's Scuff. They've been in the game for a long time. And because those are at their core a stock Microsoft or Sony or Nintendo controller, they're going to have wireless connectivity with the console just like a stock controller, which is really great. A lot of the controllers we're talking about here today will need to be wired, especially in those lower price points, anything sub $100. For a lot of you, that really won't matter. Me personally, I don't mind going wired if I'm at PC because the tower's right there. I'm sitting at my desk. But if I'm casually playing on my console, most likely in the living room on my couch or in the bedroom propped up in bed, I don't really want to be tethered with a wire, especially if you have kids or pets running around, their clumsy asses could trip over it. And the whole wireless lag debacle has become less and less of an issue over the last five to 10 years as wireless technology, especially in controllers and mice, has advanced to a point to where the input lag and delay is so friggin' minimal, it's it's not that big of a deal. Another shorter video coming in the future on that topic. You're probably catching on to a trend here. A lot of videos coming in the near future around controllers or gamepads, so make sure you subscribe if you're all about flicking the sticks and finger popping those buttons. Meanwhile, you two were standing around, finger popping each other's assholes.
We're not finger popping each other's ass hugs. Also, another little theory I have in my noggin as to why more controllers work wired on the Xbox and not the PlayStation is that just the whole interface is a little bit more PC-like on the Xbox. Microsoft Xbox, Microsoft Windows. It just seems like the OS and the how the way the console runs is a little bit more like a PC as opposed to the PlayStation, which is not. It's definitely a dedicated console. And even the way they approach their controllers using a really strict Bluetooth protocol, it's not just like normal Bluetooth 5.1. I've tried to use just little generic Bluetooth controllers and they, they don't work a lot of the time. Now, quickly touching on the topic of warranties, currently Xbox Series controllers from Microsoft do carry a six month warranty. It used to be three months on the Xbox One and I think the beginning of the life cycle of the series. It is now six months and their premium controller, the Elite Series 2 and the Core, its white counterpart that is much cheaperly built. Now, that's not a real word, but it, I made a real video disassembling the two and comparing them and the guts did not look well, they, they're the same, but the controller on the outside felt a lot cheaper. Those expensive $160 controllers used to carry the same three-month warranty as a standard controller. They now carry a one-year standardized warranty, but anything less than six months, I think, is just freakishly short. Hex and Scuff still offer a six-month warranty on controllers that cost $260, $300, which I just find astronomical. But most custom premium pro controller companies generally offer a one- to two-year warranty. AIM offers a lifetime that doesn't cover stick drift, but it does cover things like the hydro dipping, the rear buttons, the clicky triggers and face buttons. So that's something to keep in mind when you're buying a very expensive controller warranty. And rolling right into stick drift because that topic is somewhat related as it is one of the most common points of failure on a controller, that battery life failure, broken bumpers and stuck in face buttons. The bumpers and face buttons very easily fixable, but the battery and the stick drift, not so much. Maybe your boy will do a tutorial, tear down disassembly, full tutorial on how to do that in the near future. Who really wants to do that though? You're probably just going to want to buy a new controller or have the warranty swap out a fresh one for you. Unless you're a DIYer and you get stimulated from that kind of thing. You love the smell of soldering flux in the morning and whatnot. But in case you've never heard the spiel from me, I've had a really good track record or run with not getting stick drift. I've been playing on controller for like 25 years, something like that. I'm 34 and I, I'm assuming I've been playing on controller for a long time. I've only gotten stick drift on four controllers. Two of those were Microsoft Elite cores that came out of the box with stick drift. I've covered that extensively on the channel. The other two were controllers that I had owned for about six years had really given him the business. Having said that, magnetic Hall effect sensor thumbsticks are definitely the way of the future because there is no physical connection like these potentiometer thumbstick modules, so the chance of you getting stick drift is abysmal. You could break a spring in there, but it would take a long time, and you'd have to be very rough on those thumbsticks. You haven't heard this previously, but in a future video that you need to subscribe for, I'm going to be tearing down potentiometer thumbstick modules and magnetic Hall effect thumbstick modules side by side, and also testing them in gamepad testers to show you the differences that you'll experience in game and then my personal experience with the two thumbsticks and which one I recommend and why. But I will just say from the stick drift standpoint, yes, magnetic Hall effect sticks are stick drift proof. At least something else on the controller will fail or break prior to you getting stick drift, no doubt. But that is something that a lot of people are worried about is, hey, I can get stick drift on that controller I just spent $260 about. It's something that I've kind of just jumped into blindly and it's worked out pretty good for me, like I said. A really good track record. I don't know if it's just luck or the way I take care of my controllers or the fact that I have so goddamn many of them that I don't really play a ton with one individual controller, but I really do. I have like three or four that I main for each console. Be cognizant of the fact that stick drift exists and shitty short warranties do as well. First of all, if you can't afford a new controller, you just want to use the one that is included with your console. Nothing wrong with that. You can play claw grip and stay competitive in first and third person shooters. No problem. People have been doing it for decades. Just make sure you stretch your fingers. You're going to get early onset arthritis. My fingers hurt. Another option that presents itself to you is getting strike packs and attaching that to a stock controller. I highly recommend against these for a couple of reasons. The main one is that 90% of these on the market take a wireless controller and then make you need to go wired. If you prefer to go wired, then this isn't an issue whatsoever, as any wireless controller can go wired by plugging in that USB-C cable. But with these strike packs, you generally have to use a little jumper cable and then be tethered or wired to your console or PC. The second one and most notable is they have a very negative, notorious reputation for being used by sleazy scumballs in competitive esports situations because a lot of times they are undetectable. Yes, there is better anti-cheat and software to detect Cronus and similar devices, but a lot of these are just piggyback devices that strap onto the back of an existing controller. They don't modify the PCB, the printed circuit board, or anything that really makes them detectable. You combine this with the fact that they have mod chips on board that have things like drop shot and automatic sniper breath hold, things that aren't programmed into the game and give an unfair advantage, and there's an issue. Not to mention most strike packs have an incredibly flimsy build quality in comparison to a controller that has dead 
dedicated rear buttons built on, and they usually have really short warranties, like three to six months, which is probably when you're going to break that shitty little strike pack. Now we're going to start with the entry level or budget friendly controllers, the absolute workhorses, and don't feel bad if you're in this broke baller category, because honestly, one of the best controllers in this entire comparison video is in this entry level segment, not even approaching the ceiling of it, but more near the middle. But these are going to be controllers for me that are under $60. Why $60? Because that's the recommended MSRP or retail price of a stock Xbox controller. Granted, on Amazon, you'll find them fluctuating between $45 to $60. 56 right now. First of all, what about a stock controller? One came with your console, it'll get the job done. Comes with a six month warranty, doubled from the three months. Has a hybrid D pad, which is a four point as well as a wheel. Like it, feels pretty good in the hand. Ergonomically, it's a wonderful controller. But you probably didn't click on this video to hear about the stock controller that you already own. Which brings us right into the offerings from Turtle Beach, the Recon, and then the Reactor, which came out later and was a more stripped down and cheaper version. The whole marketing theory with the Reactor did not work as somehow it's now $50, which is more expensive than the flagship Recon controller, which is only $45 currently on Amazon, but was $60 recommended MSRP when it came out from Turtle Beach. One of the coolest thing about these controllers, in fact, the only unique feature to these is that it has an audio control block that gives you superhuman hearing, which marketing buzzword aside, boosts up the mid-range frequency so you can hear footsteps. I personally don't use it and have bashed it in my past headset reviews for Turtle Beach, but it does have that built in to where you don't need a Turtle Beach headset to take advantage of those features. You also have a four-way equalizer and some other cool controls for your 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, but you're probably not using that anyway because you've made the jump to wireless. I do think the reactor looks cooler with that plum purple. It does lose those rubberized grips, which feel fantastic and loo for some cheap ass plastic, and it does remove that audio control block. So if you are going to purchase one of these Turtle Beach controllers, just go for the Recon, which used to be the more expensive version. But in my opinion, there's better options out there. The Power A Spectra Infinity Enhanced, I know that's a long name and we're going to break that down in just a second, has been the golden standard for a cheap third party controller for ages because it was sold in brick and mortar stores like Walmart and Best Buy, and they've been at the same price for ages, $45 and sometimes they're even on sale as low as 35. These were the bee's knees and the mule's nips during the Xbox One generation. However, over the last two to three years, there's been a huge influx of really good entry-level Xbox controllers, and because of that, I no longer recommend the Power A Spectra Infinity Enhanced. What do all those words mean? Well, Power A is the company, Spectra is the model. Enhanced is just that. It's their upgraded version, which has a rubberized faceplate and apparently more durable internals, and Infinity is their name for their RGB spectrum cycling LED lights that you can dim, change, disable. Then you've got the 8-bit Doe Ultimate Wired Controller for Xbox, which simply is not the Ultimate Controller, that's just what they call it. That's a $35 controller, but the competition is thick, and in comparison to all its competitors, it does nothing special, and in all components, it falls a little bit flaccid. Also, they have a permanently affixed cable, which is a cardinal sin in the controller world. Same thing with the recently released HyperX Gladiate. It is their first mass-produced controller, and in my opinion, they should have stuck to PC peripherals such as keyboard and mice, because this gamepad just ain't it. It's $35 but it feels even cheaper than that, and cosmetically, it looks like an eyesore. Get it out of here. So what is the winner winner chicken dinner in this entry level workhorse gonna slap you sideways segment that is absolutely not even comparable, going to go to the GameSir G7 and its newer counterpart, the G7 SE or Special Edition. These are both wired controllers for Xbox. The G7 base missionary version is $45, and the SE or Special Edition is $50. That additional $5 is gonna get you magnetic Hall effect sticks, which are indeed stick drift proof. But unfortunately, the SE does lack the rubberized grips in lieu of some cheap ass plastic, just like Turtle Beach did with the recon to the reactor. But that controller does sport an incredibly fast pulling rate when you are on PC, and it will actually go to 1000 Hz, giving you one millisecond of input lag or delay directly from the factory with the manufacturer's software, GameSir Nexus, which is actually pretty damn good because a lot of these controllers have really crappy software programs. GameSir is not one of them. And the reason I do recommend it is that it has mechanical face buttons, which have an actual tap life cycle, which will last you longer than membrane switches, but they feel phenomenal. You also have rubberized grips and two of the best rear buttons I've ever felt. Ergonomically, they are in a perfect spot. They're also damn near flush with the rear shell, so they're not sticking off too far. They're also insanely quiet and can be rebound or programmed on the fly, no application necessary, and it's very quick to bind them. At the end of the day, you have a $45 controller that is ergonomically extremely comfortable, has two fantastic rear buttons. The thumbsticks not only feel great, but also performed good in gamepad tester. Granted, it's a case-by-case -case basis because they're potentiometer thumbsticks. The one I got was a beast, a freak beast. I actually recommend the regular G7 over the SE, even though it has potentiometer thumbsticks that could get stick drift, not those Hall Effect joints. The reason being, you have those rubberized grips, which are way more 
comfortable. And you have those mechanical clicky face buttons, which me personally, big old fat fan. Both those controllers do carry a one year warranty. So if you get stick drift within that one year, swap it out for a replacement. If it happens after that, bust out your wallet and get $45 at the ready because that controller's worth it. Next, we're approaching the mid size sedan. So stuff with a little bit more leg room, generally leather, better interiors. Oh, controllers. So the mid grade joints are going to be between 60 and $180. I know that's a wide spread. That's a fat buffet there, but there's a ton of controllers in that 60 to $180 price point that have a lot to offer. There's also some stinkers in there you should steer clear of. Speaking of which, saving the not best for blast, the opposite, starting with one of the stinkiest, the Power A Fusion Pro 3. The 3 is the best version or iteration of the previous by far because they ditched those huge boat or paddles, which by the way, ground down and became useless because it was metal against plastic on the back. But now there's four rear buttons, which are okay. They're too close to each other and also stick out a little bit further than they should, but they're not horrible and they're a big step up from the paddles. You have the same three-way trigger stop system that does absolutely nothing other than adds another feature to the box. And the Fusion 3 ditched those lead weights that were in the palms. They were literally adding what looked like fishing tackle or fishing weights in the palms on the Fusion 1 and 2 to make them feel like a more durable controller. No longer the case on the 3 and the warranty is also doubled now at two years. So that's a great option at $80. Is it the best in that mid-range? Absolutely not. Let's keep moving. You've got the Master of Disaster Ass Blaster Thrustmaster E-Swap S and X as well as the Forza Edition controller. E-Swap S and now $196, which is way more than the 160 at launch. And I can't recommend that controller because the E-Swap X, which is its bigger brother, its flagship with more features, is now only $135 on Amazon, slashed down from its retail of 160. And that controller not only looks better, but it has an additional control module for the 3.5 millimeter jack, as well as additional customization with these color pop kits that allow you to swap out the triggers and other components. In the same family, you also have the E-Swap Limited Edition Forza controller, which has a little steering wheel that can be swapped on the left or right thumbstick slot, or even where the D-pad would go. I did a review of this controller, as with all the controllers I'm talking about in this video. It is freaking awesome. If you play racing games and do not have the space for a racing sim setup with a wheel and pedals and shifter and all that other crap, screw the racing suit and the full face helmet, take off the gauntlets, just use this controller. It's really sick if you're into racing games. But all Thrustmaster controllers now carry a two-year warranty and one of the coolest things about them is that they swap, they e-swap. They have these kits where if you get stick drift, you can pop in their new NGL mini sticks. I believe that's what they're called. And they are freakishly accurate in the potentiometer thumbstick department. They have a very taut resting value. They're also incredibly accurate with a very low average error rate and gamepad tester. So those mini sticks are fantastic. They come stock on the e-swap S and X. And if you get stick drift, you can swap them out. Those kits are about 35 to $40 on Amazon and can even change up the color of how your controller looks. I'm a big fan of the Thrustmaster series, and they always get a recommendation for me in the mid-grid. Next up, the Purple Powerhouse from PDP, the Victrix Gambit at $100. That's been the going asking price since it launched, and it hasn't gone down a skosh. Now, all PDP products have a warranty between 30 days to five years. The controllers carry a two-year warranty. PDP is the parent company of Victrix, I should specify that, just like Corsair owns Scuff. Steel Series owns Control Freaks. That happened recently. You're getting off topic. Reel it back in. But the Victrix Gambit deserves another video on the channel. I reviewed it ages ago and there's a ton of segments that I added to my controller reviews such as measuring the polling rate which is one of the biggest things about the Gambit. It is it's touted on the landing page as being the fastest Xbox controller. Guess what? Without an overclock it really isn't and the overclock can only take place on the PC even if you overclock at the, at the PC and then bring it over to your console. It's not flashed onto the PCB. There's no memory on those controllers other than rear button profiles. So um, no, without an overclock it is not the fastest controller. It does use this dual core processing, which I'm like I said, I'm going to make another video on the Gambit because it is actually a pretty complicated controller, kind of like the way I said the word complicated and more intricate than it had to be. That controller's wild. It has a rubber swappable faceplate that feels like a giant condom. I never use that one because it makes the thumbsticks drag. But if you use the hard plastic one, it's more typical of a regular controller and some of the features that stand out clutch triggers, which have five way trigger stops. So you can really dial in and fine tune exactly what you want. By far one of the best if not the best trigger lock system that I've seen. I think AIM has the best PlayStation 5 trigger lock system and currently the best Xbox trigger lock system is going to be that Victrix Gambit. Pretty sick. But to not waste too much time here, you have four or two rear button swappable options. They do feel really cheap and chintzy since they are swappable and not permanently affixed. And as neat as that controller sounds on paper, it really puts a tick in all the marketing boxes. It just doesn't have the best user experience and I rarely grab it when I'm selecting an Xbox controller. But in-depth video on the Victrix 
Gambit Gambit coming in the near future because it's an enigma. Next up, you got my friends Blazer, Laser, and Phaser, which means it's time to talk about Razor. We've got the Wolverine Ultimate, Tournament, V2 Chroma. Yeah, they make a lot of controllers, even the Raiju for PS4. But I'm going to break this down real quickly. All Razer controllers have a one-year warranty. Razer, as a company that does computer peripherals, has really shitty warranties generally for keyboards, mice, headsets, etc. Controllers, they're okay at one year, but not doing the best. The Tournament is a two rear button Xbox controller that has been discontinued for ages now, so the price is through the roof because they're kind of rare. Shortly after the launch of the tournament, there was the Razer Wolverine Ultimate, the OG, the original version, which I have an entire video going over why I prefer the original OG version over what replaced it, the V2 Chroma. And something to keep in mind there, a little confusing tidbit, Razer has another controller that was only $100 with no rear buttons, and then the V2 Chroma is the Razer Wolverine Ultimate successor that has rear buttons. It's a debacle with the naming convention over there, and they really need to sort that out. But Razer has long been touted and praised and back massaged in my book for having some of the best face buttons and D-pads because they are these clicky mechanical joints that feel so buttery smooth on the fingertips and also have a tap life cycle and will last you a good long time. Another thing I like about Razer controllers, they have an additional set of bumpers. So you have six additional remappable rear buttons, four on the back, two on the top. They do also have some somewhat gimmicky features such as customizable RGB, which you can turn off and it does greatly extend your battery life. They do also have this slow speed sniper mode, which sucks because you have to bind it or dedicate it to one of your rear buttons. So there goes a binding for that, but it slows down your aiming speed by about 60%, which sucks because you're not actually getting more proficient at shooters at modulating your thumb control. You're just using one specific controller that has that feature. What happens when a new controller comes out and you move to that and you're like, Ooh, I don't know how to aim with a sniper rifle anymore because my controller used to help me with that. Plus, like I said, you're giving up a rear button for that. But of all the Razer Xbox controllers, my opinion has changed and I now do recommend the latest and greatest, the Razer V2 Chroma, which was $150 currently on sale for $110 on Amazon. If you did want that original OG, it was $90, it's slashed to $65, and I'd move on that pretty quick because that controller's out the door. It's discontinued, they're not being produced anymore, and the value of it's going to go through the roof if you are a controller collector. And that big bad PS5 controller that's astronomically expensive and has a lot of problems, that would have never existed without the original Wolverine series. A pretty darn comfortable controller, to be honest, but for $110, you got a one-year warranty, you've got four remappable rear buttons on the back, although they're in a stupid-ass position where you have to extend your fingers at a very awkward angle to cover them, which adds a little bit of knuckle fatigue if you're playing long gaming sessions. Other than that pretty clumsy rear button design, overall, I really do like the Razer controllers, the clicky face buttons, D-pads, RGB looks pretty slick, and they're comfortable in hand. Not the PS5 one I reviewed recently, that one's not comfortable. But if you're hell-bent on getting a Razer controller, check out the V2 Chroma. Wrapping up the mid grade, that $60 to $180 segment is going to be Dream Controllers. For $135 to $170, they do cosmetic-only modifications. They hydro-dip those bad boys with graphics. I did review an Attack on Titan-themed Xbox One controller a fortnight ago, if you will. Two years ago, something like that? But Dream offers no pro controller features. For $50, you can make it, quote, modded with a very basic mod chip on board with a one-button control niblet on the back. We'll talk about a very high-end modded controller later in the expensive category with a built-in mod chip, but I just can't recommend Dream Controllers. They only have a 30-day warranty on the controller itself. Six months for the hydro dipping, which I feel like you're going to need it because it starts to wear off pretty quickly. I don't really think they add any kind of a clear coat or protectant on there, which is a problem. But since they only specialize in cosmetic modification, that's pretty much all they do. I wouldn't go to them for a mod chip because we'll talk about Mega Mods later. They do the mod thing really well. And all of the other custom controller companies that we're going to talk about in the next segment, the expensive balls to the wall, take a loan out and sell a kidney segment, those all do the same cosmetic customizations with hydro dipped face plates. So, but Dream's not really doing anything special here. You don't belong here. So the best controller in that mid grade segment is going to be the Game Sir G7. What the fuck, Kevin? That was one of the cheaper controllers. You're absolutely right, but it's it's dipped its toe all the way into this segment. But if you gots to get a controller in that mid grade, I absolutely recommend the Thrustmaster E-Swap X, or if you're a racing game fan, the Forza edition with the little steering wheel. Hands down, Thrustmaster dominates the mid grid. All right, welcome to the big leagues. You got that raise, you got no woman telling you you can't spend an astronomical amount of money on controllers, and you have no personal quarrels with spending as much on a gamepad as you did with the console itself. Let's get it deep into debt or bankruptcy, but let's premium or pro controllers, baby. Starting in no particular order, we have the Hyper Recon. If you are going to spec out an Xbox controller from Hyper, I don't recommend going through the builder because you're not really going to get that much more out of it. Just get the pre-built Recon. It's $200 and you have two different four button placements. One, if you want to cover all four of the rear buttons with your middle 
middle fingers, and another variant called four lowest if you want to use your middle fingers for the top two and your ring finger for the bottom two, which I like. Four buttons, four fingers. Makes sense. This controller does feature rubberized grips, however, they're not very plush, but better than rough plastic. They have an estimated seven day build and then standard shipping for $15, which should get it to you in three to seven days on top of that seven day build time. Or you can pop $30 for express shipping, which should get it to you in two to three days. Now, if you get the pre-built recon, you're sticking to those base colors, although I like that flat matte black. I think that looks pretty sick. This controller's really no thrills when it comes to customization, but having four remappable rear buttons, rubberized grips and trigger stops in a $200 controller, not bad. How about the warranty? The majority of the controller is covered by one year. However, stick drift and other components have a much shorter warranty. Recommend catching the full review because I do break down which components carry what. I do that for all the reviews of these controllers if there's specific components that have different warranties. Next up, you're in the crosshairs because we're talking about AIM, the only controller that has a lifetime warranty, although that's not on stick drift, but it is covering a shitload of other components such as the rear buttons, clicky triggers, hydro dip shells, and all this stuff on screen. Now the pre-built, called pre-designs, are $100 and have no rear buttons. Gross, why are we talking about them? For $128, you can get the new paddle design in the builder with a stripped down controller and no cosmetic mods, just an AK-40 Kevin special, performance only. Now they have updated or revised their paddle design, thank the lord, because I was not a fan of the original that I tested. I haven't gotten my nitty gritty icicles on this new design yet, but it looks identical to what they're rocking on their DualSense controllers. They are removable, so if you want to take off one, two, three, all of them, you can do that. But the biggest problem here is that their Xbox controllers have no remap ships, so you're going to have static buttons that are always going to be what you select in the builder. Gross. Slathering all the goodies and options on in the builder, you're spending $258.58. That's no accessories with things like additional USB-C cables or increased build time. AIM is a killer controller company when it comes to PS4 and 5 controllers. However, they've been a little bit lackluster in the Xbox department. They did recently revise their rear paddle design, which is fantastic. It looks like a big step up, but they're still not remappable and removing the battery tray door can be a little bit finicky with those four rear paddles, the spider kit they call it. And overall, I do think there is better options in the Xbox segment, although they do carry a lifetime warranty, which needs mentioned because that's friggin' awesome. The Scuf Prestige has been discontinued and replaced with the Instinct and Instinct Pro, which is a better controller. I really wish I would have held on to my Prestige, which I reviewed because it was a gorgeous looking controller just for the cosmetic factor of having it on the wall. I think it was a really pretty looking controller, but it did have that typical scuff rear paddle design, which has been horrible. I've been bashing it up and down the metaphorical block for years. Luckily, that was changed about two and a half years ago with the introduction of the ninth generation home consoles, the Series X and PlayStation 5, moving to the Instinct Pro and Reflex Pro for the Xbox and PlayStation accordingly, which now use a much, much better rear button design. The Prestige was cool if you can get your hands on one. It's a sexy looking controller, but in all aspects and components, the Instinct is a better controller. It is its successor. That Instinct Pro is going to retail for $230 on the Scuf website or Amazon. It is currently on sale for $210 on Amazon. And just the basic bare bones color, that gray with orange trim, I think looks so sick. This is one of my top three Xbox controllers and one of the ones I grab constantly. The trigger stops are fantastic as they give you a mechanical mouse click when you turn them on. The rubberized grips feel insanely good on your hand, grippy, soft, supple. And then those rear buttons, like I said, big step up from the Prestige and previous Scuf design. Also remappable pretty quickly on the fly, and you do have three profiles that you can swap on the fly. The Instinct is sick and definitely one of my recommendations. The only thing I don't like, it's a little bit pricey, and also it has a six-month warranty. Same thing as Hex. Next up is another one of my go-tos, my quick grabs, and that's the Hex Advance, which is going to retail for between $180 and $240, depending on the cosmetics, what faceplate, what colorway or theme you get. They do have a lot of options, and I have to say they look so cool. I am a big fan of the way my Advance turned out. These again are covered by a six month warranty, which is half of what it should be. Actually, it's about a quarter of what it should be, but you know, this has one of the best rear button designs, incredibly ergonomically comfortable where I want to naturally rest my hand on this controller. I got buttons under there. They are remappable. Everything's badass about this controller except that warranty. The Advance is still in production, but it has been succeeded by the newer Ultra X model, which retails for $190 to $250, so exactly $10 more on the low and the high end than the Advanced, which I actually prefer 
were due to having a better rear button design. The Ultra X is a better Xbox controller in every single aspect and component except for the rear buttons, which are such a big deal to me that I actually prefer the Advance because it just fits better in my hand. The Ultra X's rear buttons are really bulky in my opinion, bigger than they need to be, but some of the features that I think is really cool, you do have four swappable profiles, more than most controllers, which only have two, and those are also color-coded with a neat little LED button. Quick to remap these two. This also has eight included swappable thumbstick caps, two more than the usual six that I see with most pro controllers. Eight swappable caps, that's dope. It was either eight or ten, it was a shitload. Eight, I think. And the rubberized grips are cool, there's none on the Advance, it's just plastic, but the Ultra X's grips are much like the Hyper Controller. They're kind of hard rubber and just don't feel the best on your hand. I prefer the Advanced, which is about $10 cheaper and has that same six month warranty. Next up, Pet My Fur and asked me about my beaver because it's time for Battle Beaver. They have pre built with silly names like the Basic Beaver that run from $122 to $220 for that smart pad FPS. The run of the middle pre built is called the Battle Beaver Pro Pick for $156. It only has two rear buttons and carries the stinkiest, shortest warranty at 30 days with a 15% restocking fee on your end. Shit out of luck over there. You can pay an extra $15 for six months of warranty, but that's insane. $15 for what I consider a very short standardized warranty. As for shipping, it was a bit of a horror story when I ordered my PS5 DualSense. It took three months to get to my doorstep with zero communication from the company other than one email to let me know the triggers I selected were out of stock. Maybe if you had built it quicker, you'd fucking have them in stock. Hire more people if you're that understaffed and you're getting that many orders, which it seems like they have because now standard build time is two to three weeks, much better than the two to three months. Or or you can pay $35 for Beaver Boost. Touch your beaver with four to six days of build time. Now in the builder, which is definitely where Battle Beaver shines, I wouldn't recommend getting a pre-built or already customized controller from Battle Beaver. Use their builder because it is so in-depth, they have the most customization options. Maybe not cosmetically, but performance-wise, hands down. If you want to be able to increase your thumbstick tension, if you want to be able to have up to six rear buttons and choose exactly what position you want them in. They even have a half smart trigger called Racing Trigger, where it gives you a 50% squeeze and then a mouse click, which is interesting, kind of the best of both worlds, or a hybrid, if you will. But they've got everything there. Clicky face buttons, mechanical D-pad, increased thumbstick tension, the most performance options. But if you just want full remappable rear buttons, you're looking at $188, and that's it, for no other pro controller features. Basically, a stock controller with just those four rear buttons. And if you load this controller to the gills with everything you can slap on it, $407.50. 407 so a little bit more than a PlayStation 5 digital version. That's not including any accessories like USB-C cables, an extended warranty, or decreased build time. Add all that on and you're nipping at the heels of $500. Next up, you don't have to be good when it feels so good to be evil. Starting at $142 for two rear buttons with a remap chip or $152 for four rear buttons or four rear paddles, the only company to offer both paddles or buttons. In the builder, you can slap on clicky face buttons, but no D-pad option. And there's one level of increased thumbstick tension in comparison to the two offered from Battle Beaver, but just like BB, you can select it on either stick or both. Evil now also offers mod chips, which I don't believe they did when I spec'd out my DualSense controller. Very interesting. Just like AIM, you can add logos or text to the controller for a little cosmetic pop, and $18 gets you a protective case to keep all your loose accessories. It'd be nice if that was included. As for a warranty, this has been doubled. It's now one year standard, 18 months for $50, and two years for $90. They call them bronze, silver, and gold tier. The two paid options carry stick drift coverage for the length of their terms, 18 or 24 months, unlike the 12 month standard warranty, which doesn't cover stick drift at all. Next up, you have a little known or talked about custom controller company called Mega Mods, who now offers pro controller features, although they are clearly using extreme rates slash hexes parts, which isn't a big deal. There's other custom controller companies that do this too, but they're charging a pretty penny for all the options in the builder. Two things Mega Mods does phenomenally, well, I guess three if you include flying under the radar because hardly anybody knows about them, is one, they do mod chips built on board. So if you are into having a mod pack, a mod chip, which I do strongly recommend that you don't use this in any kind of an online multiplayer situation or else you're just a big sleaze wad, but potentially a grindy game, you're farming for resources or something, you just hold down a button and it spams it for you, turbo function. Or maybe you're playing through the campaign of Call of Duty and you want drop shot engage and auto sniper breath hold. All that's built into the controller with a really cool little LED interface. And I think Mega Mods does the whole mod chip thing really well. One interesting thing that needs noted is on the Xbox side of the house, you have to pick and choose if you want pro controller features like back buttons, trigger stops, and swappable thumbsticks, or if you want a modded controller with that onboard mod pack. You can't have both. They're two different entities, as opposed to their PlayStation 5 controller.
controller builder where you can spec out a pro controller that has those rear buttons and trigger stops, but it also has a mod pack on board. In the future, I hope that they integrate the two to where you can have a modded controller that's also a pro controller. The other thing I got to praise them for is cosmetically, the two controllers I have gotten from them, I actually have gotten three from them. They look so gorgeous. Cosmetically, they turned out great. As for pricing, strapping everything on the controller in the builder, $318. However, it automatically applied some kind of a promotion or discount, which slashed it down to $261.87. On top of that, chuck in $15 to extend the warranty from three months to a year. And my biggest note to the company is to revise their website and give a full revamp or facelift to their builder because it is just a detriment. It is not smooth to browse on mobile or desktop. And my biggest recommendation to my viewers is not to sleep on MM or Mega Mods because they make pretty good custom controllers as well. You just never know because their website's a stinker. And moving on to the Mac Daddy Mega Meet, the Elite Series 2, the licensed Microsoft first party controller that everyone knows as a pro controller because it's sold in brick and mortar stores such as Walmart, Best Buy. It's right there on the homepage of Amazon winking you in the face saying, buy me, buy me. Retail, $180, but it's been out forever. So you can find it on sale. I've seen it as low as $120 around Black Friday. Now the Elite Series 2 is my third top three Xbox controller in any price point. When I just grab an Xbox controller, it's going to be an Elite Series 2. I think it is a phenomenal pro controller other than the terrible quality control reputation. These controllers are notorious for disintegrating in people's hand, coming out of the box with broken bumpers, stuck in face buttons, and of course, stick drift, which I personally have been touched by in two cores. But what I love about the Elite Series 2, you got that nice little carrying case, although it does put the USB-C cable directly over the thumbsticks. That's a stupid ass design. Just don't put a USB-C cable in the carrying case, I guess. But what's really cool about this controller, you do have three-way trigger stops that actually work and work exactly as they should. The halfway mark cuts out about halfway of the trigger pull. The third mark cuts out about 95% of the trigger pull. You're not getting a mouse-like click like you're getting with a lot of other controllers from Scuff and Hex, but you're getting a very short pull. How it works is it has a little plastic prong or lever that comes out and stops the trigger from being pulled all the way. I also do like the rubberized grips. I like that the software is integrated directly with your Xbox, so you create your profiles right there in the Xbox Accessories app. You don't need to install a third-party one. Cosmetically, the Elite Series 2 is one of the sexiest stock controllers. In fact, that's why I don't customize mine. I just think it looks too damn good. There's also a vast aftermarket. Scuff makes rear paddles for it. I don't know if I'm supposed to tell you this, but Extreme Rate actually just came out or is coming out with rear paddles for the Elite. I got a set coming out for review. Hell yes. But those four stock rear paddles, those metal mechanical bad boys are fantastic. They are some of my favorite rear paddles, at least for Xbox. I generally praise buttons that are sunk almost damn flush with the rear shell. However, these paddles just work. They are the epitome of durable because they're metal. You can remove as many as you see fit. One, two, all of them. They're quick and easy to rebind, although you can't do it on the fly by holding down like a series of buttons. You do need to go into the software, which is kind of whack. But overall, an Elite Series 2 just fits damned good in the hand. Then top the little cherry on the cake that you have increased thumbstick tension with that included tool where you can tighten up the thumbsticks. You literally screw or jack them down to select from three different tension levels. I had the lightest on the left and the highest or most resistance on the right. And you do, of course, have six swappable thumbstick caps, including a very high right stick, which works good. I just wish it was a little bit wider. I do love that dome stick with the little lines around it. That bad boy is one of my favorite out of the box thumbsticks. Now, I have heard down the grapevine that over time, Microsoft has been increasing the durability of the Elite Series 2. I'm not sure if that's the case or not. I've had my Series 2 for a long time. No issues with it whatsoever. I did have out of the box stick drift on two core controllers, but my OG original Elite Series 2, which I bought, I want to say in the asset of 2019, is still running phenomenally. Now, if you don't want to spend the recommended retail of $180 for the real Series 2, the one that comes with all the accessories and is dressed in black, you can be a whore for sure and get the core, which belongs on the floor. It's $130, but you buy the accessories. Only what you need. If you want longer thumbsticks, you can buy them online. If you want the rear paddles, you've got to go dig for them in a back alley. You thought they'd come with them? No. The core does feel cheaper on the hand than the original Series 2 because the plastics are a little bit thinner. It doesn't have that rubberized soft touch material on the faceplate. It just feels crappier. And the internals are identical despite a statement from Microsoft claiming increased component durability. We know that's incorrect because I did a teardown or disassembly as soon as the core came out. Personally, I am blatantly against purchasing the core, not only because I had an unsavory experience with two of them back to back, brand new in box, just shredded, terrible, but also cosmetically, I think the real Elite Series 2 in black looks better. It feels better on the hand with that rubberized faceplate, and it comes with all of the pro controller accessories, such as the swappable thumbsticks, the rear paddles, which hello, it's a pro controller. 
that's the main feature. How are you going to ship it without the without what makes it a pro controller? That's just silly. But the original Elite Series 2 with its $180 retail and its one year warranty, I do recommend it. They have a terrible quality control reputation. I've had good luck with mine and hopefully you have good luck with yours as well. But we're not done just yet. We got a surprise visitor, the OG Elite Series 1 coming out of left field. Don't even bother. It's been discontinued for fucking ever. It came out in 2015, but I will say if you do find a good condition, limited edition Gears of War Elite Series 1, lock that bad boy in because that controller has an average value of 1,000 US dollars. It is a piece of, of art and ass. Sweet piece the reason I say don't bother getting an Elite Series 1, they're really hard to find. They've been discontinued for a long time. They have a micro USB port, not a USB-C port. And there was a lot of revisions or changes from the Elite original to the Series 2. There was two-way trigger stops to three-way trigger stops. They changed the included thumbstick caps. The rear paddles are different. They're about 30% smaller on the Series 2 and they look better. There was no increased thumbstick tension on the original Elite. And the durability was even shittier. The quality control was even worse on the original Elite. So there really is no reason to hunt that one out unless you just want one in new in box condition for a collection or something. So to sum up, what is the best controller you can buy for Xbox? Hands down, the Game Sir G7. Not even the SE with the little magnetic Hall effect sticks that everyone's up in arms about, but the original G7 that could potentially get sticked or for you at any time. It's got better mechanical face buttons and rubberized grips. Having said that, if you have a little extra doge in the pocket, the Thrustmaster controllers are sick. They're super customizable because you can get those color pop kits. Also, the Forza one is undeniably a great bet if you like racing games. And they're sticked of proof as well because they have the old chuck it and replace it method where you get swappable replacements. Granted, you're just replacing the problem. In the meantime, while you don't have stick drift, the Thrustmaster mini sticks are f pretty much the best potentiometer thumbsticks I've used. And if money is no option and you can buy any Xbox controller, there are three that I do strongly recommend just because they have killer rear buttons that fit so damn good in my hand. You don't even know they're there. I feel like you're holding a normal controller until you squeeze and you're like, oop, yeah, I got extra inputs back there. That coupled with the fact that they look cosmetically which is freaking gorgeous. AIM, I always recommend because they have a lifetime warranty. Their Xbox controllers aren't as good as their PlayStation controllers, but they are getting there. They did revise their paddle system, and I feel like they're making changes to make better Xbox controllers. Do recommend them. Lifetime warranty, they look sick as hell. The Scuff Instinct Pro not only looks phenomenal, but those triggers are balls to the wall. And those rear buttons are a huge step up from the original paddle design that Scuff was using. I will say it is still difficult to cover all four of them simultaneously just because your middle finger is wedged in between both buttons. A point I made during my review of that controller, it's kind of hard if you're trying to cover all four of them simultaneously, but if you don't give a shit about that, great rear button design, looks awesome. Only crappy thing there, six month warranty on a $230 controller, spooky. Then the Hex Advance, the Ultra X is a more robust and feature rich controller, but I like the Hex Advance because it has better rear buttons. I like it a lot more. Six swappable thumbsticks, not eight, but the rear buttons are better, which is a big deal. And my last strong recommendation for an X Xbox Pro or Premium Controller is an Elite Series 2, which you probably already own if you're watching this channel because it is a freakishly popular Pro Controller. In fact, it is the best selling, most units sold Pro Controller on the market by a long shot. And that is probably why it has such a bad quality control rep because they've sold so many gosh darn units that statistically there's going to be a lot of issues in there, but not making excuses for them. They were having some major quality control issues that hopefully have been fixed. Hey, long time subscriber over here, Kev. Great content, keep it up. What about building a controller from parts? Great question from the guy that wasn't me. So what he's referring to is buying individual parts or components from a company called Extreme Rate. You supply a stock candidate controller, you do a disassembly or tear down yourself, then you pick and choose what parts you want. I want this rear button kit, these clicky face buttons, this hydro dipped front shell, then you put it all together. The reason I didn't include it in this video is this is the best Xbox controller you can buy, not build. And most people watching this video are in the market to just pick up a controller and don't really want to assemble a controller. But if that is an option you're interested in and do want to take, keep in mind you will have zero warranty unlike these pro controller companies because you are disassembling or tearing down a stock Xbox controller which has that six month warranty, but when you customize it, you lose that warranty. So you have no warranty, you have to supply your own controller, pick and choose what parts you want, install them yourself. But I will do a video in the near future showing you what parts I recommend if you're trying to build your own custom Xbox controller, and of course, show you how to install it all. Subscribe so you don't miss that. This has been AK40 Kevin, aka the controller captain. My stallions and Stallionettes. Hopefully you know exactly what Xbox controllers to get now. Drop in the comments section below your opinions, your questions, your comments, your concerns. We'll get a forum going on, a little controller conversation, and I will see you 
tomorrow. Peace. If you enjoyed the video, liking it helps it to get seen by more gamers. This information will reach and assist them as well, which in turn helps me grow this little channel, which I do greatly appreciate. Subscribe for more content like this. I cover news in the gaming community and industry, tutorials helping you get set up streaming and YouTubing, as well as honest gaming product reviews, keyboards, mice, headsets, controllers, mics, chairs, etc. There are some hefty exclusive discount codes found only in the description of my videos and only for the audience here at Gamer Heaven. I have links to all my other platforms and socials in the description below. To get in touch with myself and the stallions and stallionettes of Gamer Heaven, join the community discord and check me out at twitch.tv where I go live every other leap year on a blue moon if it falls into an odd calendar number and my pH balance is on point. Just kidding. Starting June, I'm going to be live streaming a lot. Thanks for watching. This has been AK40 Kevin hosting Gamer Heaven and I'll see you tomorrow because I upload daily all the time, 60% of the time, sometimes, most of the time. Peace.